guys, I'm Gabriel Roberts with Roberts Bushcraft in the house today, showing you a little video of my loadout in my Philby rucksack. Now I use uh, all three parts, or all three components to the system, the uh, main ruck, the three day, and the water carrier, which also has the camelback water bladder in there. I'm gonna take that down. I'm gonna show you what all I put in my main Philby. All right, so starting on the ground here, this is the Philby main ruck. A, uh, it really doesn't look that big on the ground, but I can promise you this is a huge rucksack. And uh, as you can see from the beginning, it can fit a whole lot of gear in here. So now moving to our right, uh, we have the green line, nylon rope. This is 150 feet of this. This is the rope that we use to repel with. And it's also just an all round great rope. TCOP right here, Actually, not the TCOP, the ICS 2000 right here. And then uh, right behind that we have the two man combat tent. And now that, uh, the two man, obviously we wouldn't carry both of these at one time, uh, or we might not be carrying any of them. But um, if it's just me and I'm just carrying for myself in this bag, I'd be carrying the ICS 2000. But if me and dad were like splitting the load, and we were carrying the two man, I would take either the fly and the poles or I'd take the tent body. And then obviously he'd get the other half. These are the Bates USMC hot weather boot, uh, combat boot. I mean, can't say enough great things about these. They're great boots, they hold up well. Uh, these drainage holes work great after you've gotten completely soaked. Feet dry out fairly, fairly quick. And obviously even quicker if you throw on a dry pair of socks. But uh, like I said, great boots, no complaints at all. So I've got an upcoming video about uh, a pretty hot question out there on the internet. How much ammo should I carry? So I'm going to kind of touch very slightly on that, uh, on this kit review here. But first I'd like to talk a moment about this ASP baton, ASP. 16 inch baton here and now a great situation that you could use this in you and it's collapsible in here comes down about that small fit that in a cargo pocket they even make little uh molly pouches for it you um if you were trying to go a little more discreet when you took things out of your bag you didn't necessarily like uh maybe you were going trying to go back into town but you didn't really want to go guns blazing keep this in your pocket and I promise you you pop that out that's either going to deal some damage to somebody or they're going to run away because they're going to be a little scared that's a great self defense option uh, especially like a non-lethal type deal you know you don't necessarily want to kill them but you want to get the point across stop messing with me and uh, it's a just a great option for self defense and uh, we'll set that back down there. And um, I'm sure you can come up with plenty of scenarios where that could be useful. Now, on the ground here isn't a uh, amount of how much ammo I'd carry for each one of these weapons. It's really just a representation of uh, what weapons I'd be carrying. So you've got a couple, let's do a couple of AR mags down here. And... Um, Again, if you want to see how much ammo I would carry for each one of those weapons, I'll have a video coming up about that. A uh, little bit of 22. We've got some buckshot here for 12 gauge. And then we've got my uh, 22 mag here. So with the toboggan here, it's just like a little watch cap. Great color. It's a condor. It's one size fits all. And, uh, it's always kept me nice and warm. I wear that while I'm sleeping. It's a great thing to hike around in. And then obviously got a smog right here. Great thing, keeps you warm. Works great as a towel as well. So plenty of, app you can even maybe make shift a uh, tourniquet out of that. Plenty of great uses for a smog there. Here I have the Leatherman Super Tool 300. I absolutely love this thing. It comes with all kinds of uh, all kinds of little tools on here. 
everything from a serrated edge to a saw. Then obviously you have uh, Phillips head screwdrivers, you have uh, knives, I mean all kinds of stuff, files. It's just an awesome tool to have. Then moving up here, I have my Baofeng radio, UV5R. And that's just a couple of ones that I have programmed in there. So me and dad can talk back and forth or I can listen in on a police channel or I can uh, uh, I listen to the uh, National Weather Station. All right, so now scooting up here, or across really, I have my riggers belt. And obviously if we were heading out, this would be on my hip and not here in the bag. Moving up, this is my little range kit. Just a little something that I can kind of keep my firearm going with. Earplugs, uh, rim wipes down there. Then this little bolt flag right here. A bolt flag, actually. And that just keeps the bolt open so you, you know there's not a, a round chambered in there. And I put that in this little woodland case that I sewed up. Slides right down inside of there. Tie a little paracord at the top if I want to. Got a little tiny uh, glow stick here. Glow sticks have plenty of applications. If you're tying it to like a ridge line or a tarp or something, you could get back to your. I mean, it's a glow stick. <laughs> the uh, Citizen Promaster Aqualand. Love this watch. This is my dad's back when he was in the Marines and uh, gifted it down to me. I had to put a new band on it since the oven broke, but it's still looking awesome. Love this thing. So, got that right there, and that's my main carry watch. So, that's what I would always have on me. And then, uh, use a stick now. This inside of this is an old Vietnam style bug net and that goes right over your head it can also go over your helmet or your bernie hat very nice collapsible canteen it's a five quart also vietnam era and uh what you can do with that is we like to you can either use it as a flotation device you can blow it up and use it as a pillow which works absolutely amazing uh, obviously you can store water in it plenty of uses for that little thing and if you roll it up, it can go down pretty small. Moving back, I have two first aid kits right here. This is kind of like a boo-boo kit. And this is the old Alice. Let's get that back. The old Alice uh, first aid, individual first aid kit right there. That's got combat gauze and uh, bigger wound type uh, dressings there. Then uh, moving up here, I have my uh, bedroll. This is an old military thermal rest. Works great. It's a uh, self-inflating. We like to blow a little air in there anyway. Gives it a little more padding. Keeps you a little warmer. But it's not so hot during. It's a good, uh, very good option because it's not so hot in the summer to where it's unbearable. And but it's not so uh, cold in the winter that you feel like you're laying on the ground. Very good compromise right there. This is a seal line bag that basically 70% uh, of what you see here goes inside of that. So that thing is amazing and it goes right down inside of the field remain and it works great. And this is the 10 by seven Woodland Camo AquaQuest Defender Tarp. This thing is absolutely bomb proof. It's survived Hurricane Matthew uh, it's uh, we canoed in it, or made a canoe out of it, and it did float. Um, this this thing has survived it all. It is the king of tarps. It's it's like if you rip the rain fly off the ECWT and uh, cut it down a little bit, you get this thing. So that I cannot say enough good things about that. That is a beautiful tarp. This right here is a orange safety vest that uh, you might wear while you're dove hunting or deer you know it's just a safety vest and uh, that bright orange 
the blazing one gives you a really good signal uh, signaling device now in the I don't have a whole lot of signaling options here but if I want it to be seen that's a very good one to go with now for example me and dad were hiking down two opposite sides of the river I was on the one that we most frequently go to and he was on the opposite side on a trail and uh, we were hiking down and we were communicating over the radios but um, we didn't quite know where each other was and I told him I was going to throw my orange safety vest right here and I had that at the time of my three day what I was hiking with and uh, I told him I was going to throw that over a tree limb and I could look across the river and I could see an open spot in the trail where I'd be able to see him when he walked by. So I'd be able to at least tell him to stop or look up by on the ridge and you know, he'd see the orange safety vest. But before he even got to the spot where I was planning on seeing him at, he could already see that thing through the trees on the opposite side of the river. So that that's an amazing piece of gear. I didn't know how good that would work out, but after that day, that is never going to leave this kit. It's going to stay with me at all times. Now, this is the Grand Trunk Scooter Breeder Pro, and uh, depending on what kind of loadout I'm going with, I might go Aquaquest Defender and the Scooter Breeder Pro over maybe the tent, uh, or one of the tents there. But, uh, you know, if I had to drop some weight and I was carrying my Vivian sleeping bag, this might be one of the first things that would go. Because simply this just, it's a good amount of weight you're adding to your pack, and it doesn't work everywhere. A bivy and a sleeping bag will work anywhere. A tarp basically will work anywhere. Or you can't, you know, it's just limited to the spots that you can set this thing up. So that might would be one of the first things I would trade to somebody else or uh, toss it. But I would try to keep as much stuff with me until I got to my bug out location as I could. Simply because when I get there, I can dump most of the stuff and I can use it wherever I need it. So now moving across here. So this is the United States Marine Corps improved sleeping system, uh, three season and bivy. They call it the IBC and uh, improved bivy cover. And honestly guys, it's Coyote Brown. I mean, how could you not like it? Yeah, it's a little tight, but it's got plenty of great features on it like the head net the bug net being off your face, you can zip it up, you can unzip it. I mean, there's just, the list goes on. And I have a video on this system linked in the description box below, so make sure to go watch that. Had I known then what I know now about this system, so like in my three-day video, I would have uh, been a whole lot less resistant to buy this because really on the internet, you got mixed reviews, uh, similar to movies. You know, people love movies that I hate and people hate movies that I love so it's just it, you know you never can tell so make sure to watch that video you might just want to buy this system so um you know this might would be something I would go with over one of the tents or the tarp and the hammock here uh honestly because it saves weight and it's less space taken up all right so right here in this seal line max bag I have sleeping clothes which uh, might would not be as important during the summertime, but as you kind of move over into the fall, winter time, it starts getting a little cooler, especially at nights. So having a little sleeping clothes goes a long way and it's a good dry pair of clothes to change into. Down here, just got 50 feet of paracord. Again, this is just a symbol of what I'm carrying right here. Obviously I have about 100 to 200 feet in there and it's all in like 25 foot hanks. So uh, that's, again, just a representation. I got the Holy Bible, and that is the uh, Gospels, and it has Psalm, Psalms and Proverbs in it as well. Then moving over from the Bible, I have the Kaminga Tritium 3H Compass. And uh, this is what the military uses. I believe all branches use this, but I'm not quite sure on that. I know the Marines definitely do. And uh, it's waterproof, fog proof. Uh, it's just, guys, that thing is bulletproof. It's got an aluminum body, great color, great, I mean, great weight and everything. I just can't say enough good things about it. Works great. 
It's pointing east right, uh, pointing north right now. Uh, it's awesome comps. It's accurate. So over here, I have the Snug Pack Enhanced Patrol Poncho, and uh, I debated whether to put the military uh, USGI poncho or the Snug Pack. And honestly, I threw the Snug Pack in here. I, in a real situation, I might would even carry both. The Snug Pack would probably go up here in my three day, and the military poncho would probably go in my main field in fact, since that might would have to be part of my shelter, depending on. Obviously, situational depending. Uh, or depending. Now, right here is my hygiene kit. This has toilet paper, uh, toothpaste, I mean, all kinds of stuff. It's got hand sanitizer. And that would be going in one of these max bags. I have a good amount of those that I put all kinds of stuff in. So, a lot of this stuff in here will be in either smaller bags or in the big seal line over here. Now, moving down from that, I have my. Uh, multicam hat right here obviously it's a great boonie hat it keeps the sun out of your face you got it waterproofed on the top so it works really good you got uh, some paracord daisy chain around the top as well Get that out of the way here we have two pairs of pants I would uh, most likely be wearing one of these two and I would have a dry pair in my pack now my bug out location is about 11 miles from our house so if I set out right on the street right now it would probably take me a day to get there not not even a whole day but you get there and uh, depending on what happens along the way I might have to spend the night somewhere to wait out a rival gang uh, on the street or I might would have to who knows I might would have to sit still for two days you know I mean you hear war stories of people having to do that kind of stuff now I'm not saying that's gonna be with every case but I mean you never know so I definitely want to change the pants. And moving down from that, four pairs of socks. I'd have one pair on, one pair drying, and two dry inside of my pack. And then under that, I just got two t-shirts right here. Gray t-shirt, and I got my Outer Banks green right here. And uh, moving over, I have the five dollar ozark trail walmart uh, mess kit i guess you can call it this thing i haven't cooked in it yet I mean, obviously you can tell what things have been cooked in and what is what is not so i'm not even going to try to lie to you but it's uh, stainless steel it looks great i think it's going to work great i know uh, dad cooked up a blueberry muffin in it one day so and it worked good for him and it's only five dollars i mean why not throw it in there it's got like a little uh well, actually, you know, we'll go ahead and open that up and show you the contents of that really quickly. You have your lid. And then you kind of have like a uh, saucepan right here. And now this uh, uh, silicone cup I also got from Walmart. Only cost about a dollar. And uh, it... pops out and it crushes down and fits good inside of that so i mean why not throw it in there let's cup of drinking coffee out of it. this is what we use to bake the muffins in bake muffins or bread in obviously you can use that as a fry this is intended to be a frying pan but the way we the way i do it is i'll mix up bread mix or muffin mix in this place it inside there and put the bowl back on and what you do is you put you know have coals from your fire on the bottom and coals from the fire on the top so you get a good nice even bake on the bottom and the top so this is a really neat piece of kit it's less than six dollars and i suggest that you go out and get one very handy and you also have in that little kit a uh, one cup measuring a cup. And if I had to lose one thing for space out of that kit, it would definitely be this. Because uh, most of the stuff we use out here in the woods is just eyeballed anyway. So, But it's always nice to have a little one cup measurement.
And then the uh, silicone cup right here. It's great for drinking coffee out of. Uh, works great. Water, ice water, like I said in my bush gardens video. And it collapses down nice and tiny. Now here are two uh, stoves that are essentially the, or basically the exact same thing. Just one cost more for the name. Here you have a Etex City. This, this is a great stove. Love it. Screws right onto this canister. And uh, works great. It's got the Piazza igniter. Never fails. And uh, here's a knockoff brand that comes Amazon. And the Piazza igniter on this never fails. So, and it looks the exact same, just doesn't have E-Tech City on the side. So my question is, is this the exact same thing or is this a cheap knockoff? I've used this once and it, I got basically the exact same results as the E-Tech City. And with this, it came in a two pack. So that's just one thing to think about. Uh, you know, normally with gear, you want to go with a name brand thing, but with something like that, if it works the exact same and does what you want it to do, why not go with the cheaper one? So that's just a little thought right there. Always in a bag like this, want to have enough fuel. Definitely don't want to run out of that. Because in a situation where you need food, but you don't necessarily want to start a big fire, you're not trying to be seen, these little canisters work great with these stoves. And also, if you're just on the trail hiking and you need a quick little uh, ramen noodles or you need a quick whatever, these stoves and canisters work amazing. Really quick, get a real quick boil out of it. It's just, can't say enough good things about this. Alrighty, so this is the Stanley Adventure Cup with the $4 Walmart cup on the bottom. Now, normally what I'll do is I'll either drink coffee out of this or the green cup on the inside and boil my water up in this. Now, I've also baked muffins inside of this with my cooking tray right here. Eating ramen noodles and small soups and things like that. We've made blackberry cobbler in this. So, I mean, the, the list goes on. You can make all kinds of stuff in here. Bannock bread, anything. It's just on a little bit of a smaller scale. Now, on the inside of this Stanley Adventure Cup, since you don't really want to waste any space, I've got a... I'll back that up. I'll just show you here. So that fits on the inside like that. This is all inside of my Stanley. And, uh... Basically, okay, so the green cup is what I drink my coffee or my uh, tea or whatever out of this. And then, uh, inside of here, I've kind of got my own little kit made. Got a couple of Folgers coffees. And uh, some Earl Grey English, or actually some Twinnings, excuse me, uh, English breakfast tea. Moving on out of that, in the Lindy's cup here, we've got a whole array of spices, that sort of thing. If you were to shoot something like a, uh, some kind of rodent, like a raccoon or like a possum, and you, obviously you absolutely have to eat it, uh, or you're going to die from starvation, you, obviously, you want some good seasoning on that, because uh, don't imagine they taste the best. So i uh, got a couple of meat seasonings here crushed red pepper got parmesan cheese garlic uh, salt old bay pepper we got a little cajun seasoning so that's a pretty solid little spice kit for that little tiny uh, bag right there got a uh, true lemon and I take some of that and add it with a little bit of sugar. Makes a pretty sweet lemonade. So uh, now I'm going to pack that back up. And down here we have the e-tool. 
This thing is awesome. You can make it a pick, make it a shovel. It's just really is cool. It's a uh, steel construction, so uh, it's not going to fall apart on you. You can dig holes or you can split skulls. <laughs> and uh, you tighten it all down right, and it's not going to slip on you. But that thing is just an amazing little piece of gear. But if I had to dump an item along the way, the E-Tool would be the thing I'd dump. Because honestly, I don't know how much I'm going to be digging holes. But still, nevertheless, a great item to have. Now moving up, I have my, it's a little stove here, and these zipper, these uh, pulls here are a little small. Just goes right inside of there. This was a Walmart bought stove. Have not even used it yet, but I do know that if I have the pan with me, I want a little bit bigger stove i know dad's used his a couple of times and it works great and you use the esbit which is a smaller version of this so you know that you know how that works and you know that it works well mm -hmm. so you can uh, any array of uh positions you can put this thing in but uh, it's got some fuel tabs right here and i just keep those on the inside along with a pair of uh usgi matches Got them out of a surplus shop. They're not waterproof or anything, but they'll get the job done. All right, so you can see that I have just a little bit of food right here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of give you a quick little overview. I've got things like rice, pasta, along with things like white chunk chicken, and uh, Vienna sausages, potted meat, uh, you know, very uh, basic stuff. You know, you can buy all this stuff in the Dollar Tree, really. A couple of, like, napkins in the MRE heater obviously came out of an MRE. But uh, really anything else, like I said, Dollar Store is basically where I got all this. So, uh, got a couple of ramen noodles up here. Uh, chicken salads. Got some peanut butter. Again, Vienna sausages and potted meats. Got a little breakfast kit, which has a honey. It's got blueberry muffins. It's got some oatmeal in there. Got uh, tea, uh, iced tea, drink mix. Also have some coffee on the bottom of that. So definitely set with that. And again, kind of already told you my meat's up here. Got uh, mussels and also have some squid. Never eaten that before, but I guess if I had to, I would. Got some more ramen noodles. We got some sardines up here at the top. Great little trick with sardines. If you get them in oil, you can uh, heat those things up over the fire. And they taste really good when you do that. And uh, then I guess we'll move over from here. So right here. Go ahead and hand that to you. This is a ferro rod. This is a big old thick ferro rod that I got off of eBay. Just compare it to my hand here. And uh, I expect to have a lot of life left out of this thing. I just have a uh, striker attached on with a little bit of paracord to a carabiner here so I can strike it. And uh, Got a little fat wood on the end so I can shave it off and obviously strike it and make a little fire. And it has some paracord there too. And normally what I do is I clip this on the inside of my bag so I never lose it and I already know where it's at. It's just on a little spot there on the inside. So that's that. Got tent stakes over here as well in a small bag. And now I guess we'll move over. Right here we have the Lansky sharpening system, and that uh, great little sharpening system there comes in a hard case. But uh, some of the times we take it out of the hard case to save space in our packs. Next up, the Baco Laplander. This thing is just amazing. It has been abused.
looks like it got ran over but <laughs> it's still going and basically what we're going to do is put that in a vise let me get you focused there oh uh, never mind camera doesn't want to focus all right you get the idea it's it's bent but uh it's still going strong and we're going to bend that back out I'll probably take that outside with me tomorrow and bend it. But that thing is still going strong, working great. Nothing bad to say about the Baco Laplander. Now, next up, we have the big dog, the Husqvarna. Multi purpose sex. Now, I've done some pretty sweet things to mine. This is definitely not how it looks when it comes to you in the mail. All I've done is engrave my name, or my nickname there at the back, put a GR down there on the bottom. Get you focused. And also, I've got a nice little lanyard back here. I've got the smaller lanyard. Uh, hole right here so I can hang it on a nail or the bigger spot so I can hang it on over a tree limb nothing bad to say about this axe you know it's cheap but it works great sharpened it up a couple of days ago got it back to razor sharp so this thing is going to keep going strong and I expect to get a whole lot of life out of this as well got inch marks going down the back need to work on those just a little bit but I love this thing. So I'm going to set this back down and we'll move up. Alrighty, so this right here is the uh, Philby three day pack. And uh, nothing bad to say about that pack either. Works great. I got my Roberts patch up there. Actually, we'll start with these. Very simple, just some good old leather gloves. Quite dirty, but. That's a price you pay when you're out in the woods a lot. So, love my leather gloves. Got a little waterproof fire kit here. Uh, when we actually, well, I'll go ahead and show you the contents of that. No reason not to. It's just a Walmart dry bag, but it does work. All right. So this is how it goes. Got a little pack of char cloth here and I've got a bag that I sewed up a little while back with my fire materials on the inside so we'll just kind of work at the top waterproof matches with striker Multiple chunks of fat wood. Nature's gasoline right here. Carolina gold. Again, another little tiny piece of fat wood. Some uh, cedar bark. Real finely ground up here. Excuse my dog snoring in the background. Cattail fluff. Works pretty good if you already have a small flame going, but if you don't, it it really just depends. It's like it's kind of weird. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's good flash timber. Some foil nuggets, which is basically just cotton balls and soaked in Vaseline, wrapped in tin foil. And now move on to the the little. Oh, another little tiny chunk of fat wood here. You can't ever have enough have enough fat wood. I have a lighter. Still works. And I have a flint and steel kit here. That works as well. It's got a good little Maybe that's not a real good piece. Got a nice little spark. Kind of hard to work around the camera mount. 
So we'll uh, pack that back up. And uh, that's my fire kit. It's a pretty good little, uh, not a bad fire kit at all. Got really everything that I would need to cover me for my trip to my bug out location or even longer. I mean, a lot of these kind of materials are going to last you for a good while. You just got to have some discipline and not use them all in the first fire you make. All right, now we'll start moving up to the hydration carrier right at the top. And another thing down here at the three day is my little range bag here. You can hear the uh, ammo that was shot. I'm just saving that up so we can reload it sometime in the future. And now uh, I've used this bag for all kinds of things. I've uh, put breakfast in it, strapped it on the top of my Philby one time. Now, currently, it's been being used as a range bag, but that can change at any time and it can go on any of these molly pouches. And it's got the strap on there right now but i would take that and roll it up and I'd stash it in one of the side pouches so that's just thought i might mention that real quick too over here you have the hydration carrier sawyer mini works great hundred thousand gallons that's more than our whole family where we're drinking a lifetime this thing is amazing I keep a, a small first aid kit in it, some hand sanitizer, another small collapsible red cup, a first aid kit uh, with antibiotic, antibiotic ointment in there. Helps a lot with chafing. And uh, let's see, what else do I keep in there? Uh, paracord, sometimes a lighter, a hand sanitizer. And I'll put a link uh, down in the description box below of what I carried inside of this during my bush garden trip. So that concludes my overview of what I carry in the Philby system. And uh, all the gear here is seasonal and situational dependent. So obviously for winter time, I would be carrying a jacket. I would have more beefed up sleeping clothes because it gets colder. And uh, so that's the, that's the kit that I carry. I think I have all my bases covered. But if you found something I missed, make sure to let me know in the comments. Let me know what you carry in the comments. And as always, may the wings of liberty never lose a feather. And God bless.